Thanks for the introduction there. Um, I always like to start a, a talk with a little bit of a personal note. So cameraman, you can cut and you know, my talk is not starting yet. Uh, it's my first time to Oakland, so uh, thanks so much for, for having me. I'm really happy to, to come here. Uh, and I wanted to, to embarrass Carolina uh, and just say thank you. Uh, thank you for running such a, such a great conference so far. And uh, to have a conference with more female speakers than male uh, is something that <laughs> so, so good. And uh, you, should, you should definitely be very proud of the work that you've done because uh, I'm very proud of you, so good job. Okay, let's get started. Uh, my talk today is called Useful Front-End Metrics. My name uh, is Ben Schwartz. I'm at Ben Schwartz on basically everything on the internet. Um, so I'm gonna, go through, I'm gonna go through performance stuff in general. Um, you've probably seen uh, talks before about performance. Um, and you know we kind of hear the same things time and time again. So I wanted to cover kind of what those things are. Here's the scoop. Time is money. Everybody knows that. It's really great that time equals money on the internet because it allows us to qualify. Uh, when, we, when we do performance work and we make people terrified uh, and we actually get to spend time thinking about our architecture and thinking about how we can improve our code bases for ourselves and for our teams and for the businesses that we're representing, uh, it's really great that it equates to money. So I think that's, that's something that we, we can establish that we all kind of know that time equals money. Uh, when a website is slow, it costs money. When they're slow, sales drop. Engagement drops, abandonment rises. And we've heard this time and time again, and it's how we're able to, you know, to keep going. Amazon found that when they increased uh, their, uh, their page speed by 100 milliseconds, uh, it, it equated to 1% of their revenue which is kind of crazy. It, it's not really a metric that you can use for your business, definitely, but it definitely works for Amazon. So maybe if you go work for them, uh, you're going to be saving them a lot of money and get a healthy bonus. 40% of people abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. Uh, that's, that's from Kissmetrics uh, last year, I believe. Uh, and their second stat, which also is kind of interesting, is that 47% of consumers expect a page to load in two seconds or less. And I don't know about you, but I look at a lot of pages every day, and I would say that probably about 10% of them load in uh, two seconds or less, particularly on a phone. So someone that uh, is doing an amazing amount of work in uh, the performance space in general is Ilya Gagoric. Uh, he works for, for Google. He's one of the Chrome team members. Uh, and he said that after a second or more, the user's flow and engagement uh, with the initiated task is broken. And he's actually talking about an interaction where somebody clicks on something and they wait for more than a second. So we've often heard that school of thought of an animation shouldn't probably last for more than a quarter of a second. Uh, he's saying that if you make them wait and they don't see anything within one second, they just kind of, this mental blank comes to them and they, they just move on. Etsy learned that when they added 160K to a page, they actually got a 12% plus bounce rate on mobile, which is a pretty alarming stat. From, uh, this is, uh, it's, it's actually a graph, but it's, it's abstract, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, from 2010 until 2014, response size grew by two and a half times. So your average response size, this is taken from the HTTP archive, grew from about 700K to somewhere like 1800-ish beyond there. Uh, and that's, that's pretty crazy because mobile phones, like, uh, who, who was talking about this? It was Adam. Uh, he, he mentioned that, you know, you just go down to the pier and suddenly your phone doesn't work and you can't tweet at anybody and you can't actually meet that friend that you're trying to check the map to go see them or anything like that. And that, that really sucks. And I think we can all empathize with that. So let's start, start a rule. Everyone is on your team is responsible for the performance of your site. Steve Souders back uh, in 2008 stated that 80 to 90% of uh, old sort of perceived speed is basically because of the front end. So it's not our job. Right? It's everybody's job. People uh, like developers uh, who work on the back ends will say that, you know, the servers are really fast and we've got SQL queries are super amazing and we've got all this amazing architecture. But it doesn't matter. Like, it's in the front end. So what do we already know? What are the rules of engagement? Uh, what do we do to make sites fast? We minify everything. Okay, cool. Uh, we use async JavaScript. 
Uh, we know that Base64 in large fonts can block other styles from loading. So if you load every font in the world in Base64 of them, you're basically blocking the browser. Uh, what else? We should animate using CSS and not JavaScript. We should use request animation frame for JavaScript-based animation. So this actually takes the time of when the browser would naturally paint. It will call the request animation frame loop, and it's an opportunity for you to be able to actually draw something to the screen. So this is really great for Canvas or for WebGL or, or whatever. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can use video rather than GIFs. I actually can't believe I just said that. Uh, everyone, you should definitely follow your dreams and use a GIF because they make you happy. We know that changing opacity, transforms, clip, and filters are cheap because they're hardware, hardware accelerated. We've learned recently, and I was talking to Mark uh, about this for, for Bootstrap, uh, that position fixed can cause really interesting uh, repaints and redraws when you're scrolling. Uh, and they found that performance in Bootstrap went kind of kind of crazy, uh, and so they actually pulled all that those hacks out where they are adding Translate 3D to try and push something to another like compositing layer in the browser. It wasn't worth doing. So we're learning these things. People are talking about them time and time again. Box shadow can actually be kind of evil. Uh, here's my browser using uh, just box shadows on these Chrome logos and just doing some basic scrolling. And as you can see, the performance uh, goes from mm, pretty great to pretty abysmal. And of course, the Chrome team have talk been talking a lot about make your, make your animation 60 frames a second and try and strive to get there. Uh, in May 2013, Adi Osmani ran through uh, an amazing Pitchfork special Daft Punk mini site just before their album came out. Uh, where the scroll, scroll performance was less than ideal. And I don't know how many people actually remember this. Uh, I certainly do. I was, I was really interested in the, uh, the full screen video and typographically it was interesting. And I, just them as a group were doing interesting stuff. But it, it really performed like crap. Um, Addy has a really great uh, article on his blog. Uh, you can see here he's actually profiling the, uh, the 60 frames per second mark uh, just up here. And you'll see that it's barely doing 30, and it's jumping all over the place. And it really gives you the idea that the browser and your machine are struggling, so that side feels like crap. So less CPU burning, painting, and heavy effects equals less battery burn. I think everyone can actually agree with that, too. Here's a rule. Only load what you need. This, uh, this comes from. Patrick Heyman's talk at CSSConf EU uh, was a fantastic talk. Patrick works for The Guardian. And he talked about what CSS you need to deliver your site. And in this example, he's talking about basically the fold. So at The Guardian, they did a study of what they as an organization consider important content. So in their case, the article, the story. That's what they're writing. That's what they're producing. That's their, their product. That's the really important part about this page. The comments, not really. Never read the comments anyway, right? Uh, sharing, related content, and popular content, they're not important. So what The Guardian actually go and do is render that article content first, and then later go and load in the sharing related content and popular content using Ajax or maybe local storage, depending on sort of how that works for them. And beyond that, they experimented with actually inlining their CSS. So this is something that Adam also touched on, where uh, it's, it's like a bit of a secret that you should never use inline styles because it's disgusting or something, and you should kill kittens if you do. Uh, but what they found is when they inlined their CSS that was just the uh, above the fold CSS, the actual critical path styles, their performance uh, on, uh, for on content load and for DOM ready dropped by six to 700 milliseconds. Now, when you're on a phone, six to 700 milliseconds, if you've got a budget of two seconds or maybe one to try and get content to your users, that's pretty significant. I think we can agree that. OK, so now that we've, we've sort of talked about uh, all these things that you should and shouldn't do, uh, and you now, everyone knows everything about performance, right? So we just minify scripts and uh, don't do anything stupid, and uh, everything's fine, right? So OK, cool. I'll see you. Um, that's not the truth. 
how do we how do we know that what we've been told or what we've learned years ago or what we've discovered on the last project we worked on, how do we know that that's actually true? Set a budget. So how much is too much? If you're a content heavy site, uh, this, this screenshot is taken from a site that uh, I, I believe it was a news site. And so their content changes on a hourly basis. Their image size uh, on the very last point is 2.2, uh, yeah, 2.2 megs, which is quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of images. If you set a budget for images, suddenly you can have really interesting conversations with your team. You can talk about what's acceptable and what's unacceptable. You can say, if we go over two megs, we need to reconsider this, or maybe we can drop one story for mobile devices, or maybe just not load them because we're going to do mobile first in the first place. And for a designer, this is actually a really interesting point. Do we really need that insanely huge banner of that perfect looking rich couple that everybody hates anyway? No. So set a budget and monitor all the things. I wanted to, uh, to, to mention uh, just real time monitoring in general. If you've ever logged into Google Analytics, you'll, you'll maybe have noted that you can get to an average page time uh, load, load time. And uh, on this particular site, it dived up on this one day to uh, 14 seconds, which is quite a lot. I think we can all agree. Um, this is the real thing that your users are seeing. So no matter how many times you run your like grunt script and you think you're doing the best thing in the world, this is the real deal. This is what people are seeing. And this is what gives you data to tell you, should we use a CDN? Should we not? Did, when we added one, did it help? What could we do next? But aside from that, we can actually do our own metrics in a site. So here's the San Francisco Chronicle. I don't know if that's like a good, uh, <laughs> good newspaper to show here. But I actually wanted to show you this API here. This is window, uh, window performance timing. What window performance timing is, is the HTML timings. So you can go into any site in your browser right now, and you can go and type this, window.performance.timing, and it'll give you the uh, any redirect times, it'll give you any delays that happened with your, with your HTML, uh, it'll tell you when DOM content loaded actually occurred, uh, and just getting these metrics, I mean, Google are pulling these into analytics for you, but you could actually go and do your own stuff in your test suite, and if your site goes beyond a certain number, you can alert for that. In addition to uh, the, the HTML timings, we can also get some, some additional uh, data here we can actually get every resource in your page. Go video. Are we going to go? I don't know. It's not going. Mm, that's a video, right? Yep. Thank you. Uh, okay, so here I've actually called window performance get entries, and you'll see that it's given us a whole bunch of uh, resource timing entries. Each one of these, uh, in this case, this one was a resource. Uh, you can see the script that it actually was. We can see all the timings. We can see if it redirected. So obviously putting redirects on re resources in your page is terrible for performance, and we can track that. So what I want to encourage you to do is actually go and use these these two simple, really, like super simple APIs, go and put those in and track some metrics and AJAX it back to your server so that you can actually go and track that for yourself and have your own numbers. You don't have to fight for your, you know, your boss to let you use Google Analytics or whatever other analytic tool there is or something that costs money where you have to sign up for it. You can just go and do this and then just beacon it back to your server, which I think is actually really empowering as a front-end developer. So those two, two APIs, super simple. Uh, there's uh, performance timing, and then there's uh, get entries. Get entries, you can also say get entries by type, and you can say get entries by type resource, or get entries by type another one. <laughs> there's uh, three or four. But coming back to the Guardian example that I showed earlier, I think there's something interesting here. We can actually go and track metrics, custom metrics, for stuff like how long did it take for the comments to actually load? Right? So we could put a little code block around our Ajax and say, 
how often, you know, what are the real people on our side all over the world? Firstly, let's look at where they are. Let's look at what CDN they're using, if any. How often do their comments load? How often do they fail? Because often we don't know this stuff. And this is, this is how you do it. It's actually super simple. You can make a mark in your timeline by using window performance mark. In this example, I've labeled it foo. Uh, then you can go and say get entries by type mark. And suddenly you've got custom metrics that have recorded using these nano times that the performance APIs give you. And then another really interesting part of that is you can measure something. So you can say the sidebar initialization uh, in the time from DOM complete until in your JavaScript code when your magic sidebar init code loaded, uh, it took this much time. And again, you can track it and send it back. Again, uh, the Google Chrome team, who seem to do a lot of the performance work that we see online, uh, have a metric. Uh, Actually, it's not Google Chrome. Technically, it's Web Page Test. So, Web Page Test is a project that's sponsored by Google. Um, and they use the idea of visually complete. And so, they go and get your site, and they get a video, and they record the whole thing, and then they break it up into increments. Here, it's showing second by second, but they actually break it into increments of 100 milliseconds, and they get they actually diff the images, and they figure out at what point your site was visually complete. And I think this is a really interesting metric, because it's actually when somebody will start interacting with your page. People wait for things. And you can, you can actually uh, see this in action on Facebook, anyone who uses Facebook. Have you ever noticed where on your timeline feed it shows a box and some lines, and it kind of looks like the post is there? It draws your eye straight away. The sidebars are still loading but you actually draw into the timeline, and then suddenly the posts appear. It's actually a really interesting thing. When they launched that, I noticed that I was engaging with the page sooner. And I think that the study that they're, they're doing there is, is really interesting. And I think this is the most interesting performance metric that we have, is when will somebody start interacting with your page? And using the performance APIs that I've shown you, you can actually go and say, hey, when was the first time that somebody actually clicked on the page? When did they actually interact with something or select some text? I wanted to mention a couple of radical tools. Uh, firstly, you could use Pingdom or New Relic. They seem to be about the same product, essentially. I think they're kind of copying each other. I don't know if anyone works for them. Sorry. Uh, they're about the same. Uh, you, can, you can get your average load times. You can you know, break down by action. You can break down by geographical region, et cetera. And also, uh, I wanted to shout out for, for Adam's tool and, and Brent's uh, CSS stats, where you can throw heaps of CSS at this thing, and it'll tell you the statistics and characteristics of your styles. So it'll give you a little graph. Uh, this is one of my phrases. I think it's new. Is the, uh, the specificity uh, graph, which uh, was first coined, I think, by Harry Roberts, maybe. Yep, yep, that's great, cool. As far as, as, far as we know, anyway, shout out to Harry as well. Uh, and I definitely encourage that you go and throw your CSS at this and understand some metrics and numbers, because metrics and numbers allow you to talk with your team and figure out what you just did and what you should maybe do next. Uh, and also, uh, setting up and installing all of these new tools or like using new services every time for every new project can be really tedious, and I kind of agree with that too. Uh, so for the last year or so, I've been working on an app called Calibre. Uh, it's calibreapp.com. And I track your site every day. Uh, or when you hit it with an API, I record videos, I keep screenshots, I get every metric that I can possibly get out of Chrome DevTools. I actually run, run Chrome headless. Uh, and I record it all for you. And uh, that's been a really interesting project for me, and, and love, to, uh, love to get your feedback or see what you, what you think about it. Here's a couple of quick takeaways. Monitor your work. Set budgets and make sure that you talk about them on a regular basis, because this is what you are judged on for quality as a developer. And don't rely on what you think you know. Actually go and prove it. Thank you. <laughs>